Cool. I'm good. All right. I'm also recording now. Thought it would be a, a nice idea to start making a video every time we have a, a decent sized update. We're starting with the Kovacs 3.2. And yeah. All right. Yeah, yeah, let's dig in. Yep. Uh, so as you can see from the the uh, sandbox UI, a lot visually has changed. Not too much actually has changed as far as the functionality here. So, you know, the buttons look different. The user interface for online scenarios, local scenarios, online playlist and local playlist is going to act the same, just look a little different and be a little cleaner in general. Um, the biggest change to the uh, front page is you'll notice that there's a free play and challenge toggle here. So if you start playing a scenario and uh, it doesn't ask you if you want to play it as free play or challenge in this screen anymore, it just go straight into free play or if you had it in free play or challenge if you had it in challenge mode, which means now you can be in challenge mode, jump straight to another scenario and you're still in challenge mode. Previously, you had to click start challenge and then play if I'm not mistaken. No, it's just one click. Yeah. And in the session manager, it's not even used when you're in challenge mode. It's just hidden for now. Maybe we can reuse that space for uh, something else in the future. On the online scenarios, we moved the rating to the right because I think there was just a lot of info to process before you you even got to the scenario name, especially for uh, new users. I think it was a bit overwhelming. We we changed the edit button. It's not the word edit anymore. It's just uh, the pencil. Yeah. So the playlist window, uh, whenever you're editing playlists in a previous update, we made it so you can drag and drop scenarios around and uh, we still had the up down arrows we finally got rid of those up down arrows so if you're wondering how to reorganize your playlists it's just click and drag now oh and uh the playlist randomization so instead of having a drop down we're making more space and um this one is just you click it and it cycles through the four different modes yep. and be aware that every time you click it it would reset the progress of the playlist because it kind of has to you know change it depending on which uh mode of randomization is being used but um, yeah, all the text and descriptions are there if you need it. Yeah, much cleaner overall, especially when I put the old design and the new one side by side. So also a lot of reorganization happened in the settings tab, uh, settings menu rather. So under the settings menu, we have, um, you know, the tabs are on the left side rather than on the top. And they've been reorganized so that the main tab has most of the useful options that people are going to be looking for. Uh, so we have visual theme shortcut here. So if you have a theme saved, you can jump straight to it, load it in, and it'll work uh, without having to, you know, change the visuals tab. But you can still go to the visuals tab and save and load themes, create new ones there. Uh, so it's just a shortcut to kind of, you know, get to that. Uh, the sensitivity settings and streamlined, all this stuff, you know, it's just everything is easier to access, we hope. So you can still get to your, uh, you know, crosshair without having to go into weapons and default weapons and stuff like that. It's all been pulled out to the, the more straightforward place and the yeah. more esoteric options that used to be on the main tab and moved over to the miscellaneous tab, mostly. Some of them kind of spread out to, I think, sound and video as well. For the first time user and the returning user, the main settings tab was pretty uh, chaotic. Right. And uh, I also should add that under the sound tab, we've done a little bit of reorganization and again, pulled some of the per weapon settings out of the weapons tab and into sounds. So you have access to all of your hit sounds, head, head hit sounds, kill confirmed, spawn sounds, all this stuff. And um, the volume sliders are a little bit more, you know, collapsed, but you can still get the master one. So just be aware of these collapsible menu items, which we've used a little bit in the past, but a little bit more so now. Basically, it was confusing. Even for seasoned Kovacs players, it was confusing that some of these sound effects were on the weapons tab and other ones were on the sound tab. And hopefully this makes it a lot more easy for people to fix up their settings yeah. and change everything. Yeah, and I should add that we also changed the UI. It used to be add, add new sound, I think. And now you actually have a plus icon, a plus button. I believe most users didn't even know they could add multiple sounds. And if there are multiple sounds, it'll just randomly pick between the list of sounds in that setting. Uh, what's next on our list? Would be uh, the FPS boost. Uh, there isn't much to say about it. We did some internal testing among the, the dev team and also some uh, NDA users. All in all, there was uh, an average of 15% more FPS. 
So hopefully that applies to most of you out there. There was also um, an instance of stuttering and hitching that we were able to resolve for some circumstances, and it'll always depend on your environment, you know, whatever your PC has in terms of hardware and software and driver configurations. Um, yeah. But that, that one is harder. In that yeah. Sense, then, yeah. yeah. So. I, I think I was the only one able to repro, actually, uh, and from the dev team. Yeah, I didn't have it on my computer. I'm glad that we were able to fix it for yours and hopefully for more users as well. Next up, we have the high score bar. You can see it at the top of the screen. And this high score bar represents um, your score on the scenario relative to your personal best. So if you're playing a new scenario, it won't show up. But if you're playing something where you have a score, then this little uh, indicator at the top, the triangle is going to go from left to right, from 0 to 100% across uh, as the scenario progresses. And your score will be this green bar, and it will change depending on how you're doing relative to your PB. So for example, if I open up um, the intro scenario, you'll notice the intro scenario gives 100 points for a kill, meaning that you don't get points until you actually kill the bot. So you'll see that it takes a while for my points to go up. Yeah, so no points, and then I get a kill, and you start to see the actual, um, you know, the green bar progress. So that kind of, as you get closer to the end of the scenario, is going to give you a better indication of how close you are to new personal best or how far behind you are. Um, and then another feature within that is on the settings tab, UI also shows session best. Um, I think this is disabled by default. It'll have a triangle under it that represents your best since you started the game. So if I get a lower score on the first run, I believe it's using the same colors from the movement score bar. You're correct. Yeah. yeah. So you can change those colors in your UI tab of the settings menu. The default is just this uh, darker gray. And if you surpass your high score, it turns bright green. All right. So I'll just stop there. And then if I play again, we will see there are two little indicators there. And the bottom one is representing my session best. So uh, yeah, hopefully that'll give you guys a better sense of how you're doing. Um, as you're playing a scenario live, if you're interested in that feedback, obviously you can hide it if you just want to play without knowing exactly what your score is going to be. But this can give you a heads up uh, in any scenario where you're not scored based on time remaining. If it has like time remaining, then we can't really calculate that live and you can't use that. Leaderboard rank. We know a lot of you like to grind leaderboards. Basically now you can, for any benchmark, you can set up a range. Uh, it will show whatever leaderboard rank you have. So if you're top 40 on the leaderboard, it will show that. AMC stair brushes and snap yeah. values. Yeah. Stair brushes is pretty self-explanatory. We've added more brushes and they're all stairs. I think we added one, two, three, four, five. Just look at the difference here. So we have uh, stairs A, stairs B, stairs concave. Uh, stairs convex and stairs spiral. So uh, if we A versus B is just the difference between just the depth, uh, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. And then concave and convex, self explanatory. And then the spiral there as well. And of course, you can duplicate and then uh, do a little rotation, move it around. Yep. Do that sort of exactly. thing. Exactly. You just reminded me that I think we have. The uh, gizmo, we made some uh, quality of life changes to the gizmo. And I think the most helpful, I would say, is the rotation one. Yeah, basically adds markers that match your grid size. Sorry, the snap value. And speaking of the snap distance, you can now actually type a value in here. So if you know you want to move a whole set of objects like exactly a certain amount of distance away, then you can just type in, you know, some number and then multi select and move them around. That's yeah. at least how I used to use that feature whenever I was uh, using it back in Reflex. Uh, let's do like 4,000, and then you should be able to yep, move it exactly 4,000 units away. And you can also do the same for uh, snap rotation. So whenever you're in the rotation, uh, you can manually type in uh, integers and decimals here. Too fun playing with the map editor. There's the paint mode. I don't know if you want to show it. It should be pretty simple. Uh, so this is the list of materials that we've assigned already outside of paint mode. 
like yeah. when you go to uh, materials your scenario theme has the default and secondary materials so control shift p lets you select one of them and say i want this wall to actually be using that surface instead and this wall to be using that one uh, and you can click and drag and it apply to all the surfaces you're mousing over control z still undoes so yeah should be a lot easier to manage uh, materials on surfaces now oh there's the move to get more points message i think oh, that's yeah. useful yeah it is so uh let's say you're going to play a scenario that has movement based scoring or distance traveled scoring and you are not realizing that it's going to reward points uh, based on that then if you're not moving the game tells you move to earn more points so that's at least a reminder that'll let you know and it will only do that, uh, I, I think, once per instance of running the scenario. So if you really want to, uh, you just tap movement, and then I think it would stop bothering you. But realistically, you should be moving if it's a movement travel uh, scenario. So, yeah. I think it's uh, the welcomed uh, improvement. I think we covered it all. Oh, I guess the only one maybe worth bringing up you know, would be the uploader showing as a known on the, the online scenarios. Oh yeah, that's right. Uh, so there was a long-standing bug where the game uh, did not know what the uploader was unless you were friends with that person on Steam. And we have now resolved that. So even if you drill down, you'll find all sorts of names in the uploader field that you may have never seen before. Yeah, I like to know the uploader because then I can find more stuff from that person. It's always good to search for Please Wait, NFNT, find some of these crazy creators doing fun things and any up-and-coming creators as well.